Hey guys, it's Pete here and welcome to the 6th um, movie review of 31 Days of Horror. And this time I'm going to be looking at the over the top sequel to Toby Hooper's classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. It's really good, I have to say. A really, really good sequel. Again, there's fan opinions on this one are divided. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, though. In 1974, horror fans rejoiced upon the release of Toby Hooper's brutal masterpiece, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The movie raised the stakes of in-your-face filmmaking and literally changed the face of horror. Twelve years later, Hooper got the saws buzzing again with this deliciously entertaining sequel starring Oscar nominee Dennis Hopper in one of the most deliciously crazed performances of his career. In this outing, Hooper splatters more blood, more guts and more gore and takes the genre to new heights of deranged and delightful terror. For a decade, Texas Ranger Lefty Henry is sought to avenge the brutal murder of his kin by the cannibalistic Sawyer family. family Leatherface, Chop Top, Cook and Grandpa. With the help of a radio DJ who is also bent on putting an end to the terror, Lefty finds his way to the Sawyer's underground butcher shop where a battle of epic proportions soon begins. And the line between good and evil gets chopped to bits. Well, again, it's the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a very serious film. It was it had a very dark tone to it. It was very controversial upon release. Because, um... It wasn't really violent, so to speak. It, it did have some pretty um, violent kills, but nowhere near as bad as people make out to be. No. What it did have instead was intensity. Like, it's a very sadistic film. Like, in the original day, he strapped her down a, a chair and forced her of dinner with them, and they're all laughing at her and trying to poke food at her, um, if memory serves. But that may be Wrong Town 2. In fact, that is Wrong Town 2. They imitate that scene in that film. But they're laughing at her, you know, stuff like that. Very sadistic. But this one is over the top. It's got a funny, humorous feel to it. It's almost as if it's not even a sequel to Texas Chainsaw. You'd expect it to be dark, but it's not. But Hooper's justification for it was that he knew he couldn't replicate the original. So he made a completely different type of movie for a different tone. And I think it works. I think that was the best choice. They'd have never been able to top Texas Chainsaw the original with a film basically the same as that. As for this one, I think it... Almost equals the original, if not equals it. Like, it could, but in my opinion, changes towards it. Um, Tom Savini, the special effects stars, did the effects for it. Uh, he doesn't really, there's not really much to show here in terms of kills. Like, a guy gets his head cut off as he's driving the car. Um, guy gets smacked so many times with a hammer, it's unreal, like a small hammer. But again, the original, in the original, he smacks a guy with a sledgehammer. You see the body twitching and all that, and he gets dragged away. It's really um, hard to watch, but in this one, he gets a small hammer and starts smacking the guy repeatedly. Um, and the guy's spitting at him as, as he's doing it, like deliberately. He, like, he keeps chewing this um, chewing gum throughout the movie, and he spits right in the dude's face, or um, near his face. And... He keeps hitting him repeatedly, 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 and it just happens so many times that you just can't help but laugh and not take it seriously. It's it's more more light spirited than the original ever was. The family themselves, Leatherface's family, he's the main killer in the series. They're very good in this one, and I have to say, I think Leatherface may not be my favorite killer in this one. No, I think that's Chop Top, his brother, played by Bill Mosley. He's like dressed like a hippie, but he's very sadistic. Like he, he was in Vietnam, and he got—I uh, don't know—I think it was a grenade or something, a gunshot, and who knows? But it dented his skull, and he has a like a glass dome over it. And Leatherface accidentally, um, miss, he misses the girl. He's going after and wax him on the head with the running chainsaw, and like saws off the wig he's wearing over the dome, and he starts like eating his own skin. He's like picking off his own skin. The Leatherface is hurt and eating it, it's really weird. And his attitude's funny as well, he's like laughing in every scene he, um, he's in, he acts like a child. He burns himself, he like lights up this piece of metal and sticks it on his dome repeatedly, it's weird. 
But uh, he's more interesting than the others. Uh, the cook from the original comes back. He's not as good in this one. He's good. I mean, the guy's a good actor, but in the original, he was so frightening. And this one, like, he, he had, like, split personality. And this one, they, they mostly, they seem to just forget it. Like, he's just sadistic the whole way through. Leatherface is um, back, again, as I've obviously said. He's more, again... He does this wee dance before he gets comes out through the chains on this one. It's weird. He does good though. The actor Bill Johnson does um, the character justice. Uh, Lefty, the Texas Ranger, played by um, Dennis Hopper. He does really good. He's all he's crazier than them. I mean, in the original, I mean, um, just be flat. I will review the original at some point, but not in this series. He. It's crazy, like, his family was killed in the original, or a couple of, like, at least one member of his family was killed, like, his, um, niece was driven to insanity, and his nephew was killed in his wheelchair of the chainsaw, you even see his skeleton in this one, and the guy finds it, lefty, and he goes ballistic, he gets three chainsaws, a big one, and two little ones that he, like, hangs around his hip area, and he goes into the... The family's headquarters, which is like a same abandoned theme park, you know, something like that, starts sawing down all the supports in anger. And then at the end, when the, the, the real DJ that's helping him, she gets captured by them and she's forced to have dinner with them, like um, the woman in the original was, um, Lefty's niece. And they knock her, and I think they're about to kill her, but then he shows up with the chainsaw, and the best, one of the best scenes in horror history occurs. The chainsaw deal between Leatherface and Lefty. Um, after viewing it a few times, you do begin to notice things like the chainsaws aren't even turned on. I think that was for safety reasons. Like, reasons like there is sound effects, like chainsaw sound effects, and it's only if you look really closely you notice they're not even on. But it's done very nicely, like the fighting. Uh, Leatherface gets the chainsaw right in the stomach. And keeps going after Lefty with a running chainsaw. Uh, he gets the two small chainsaws out of Lefty and keeps dueling them. Uh, the cook guy gets a grenade. He's trying to commit suicide or at least use it against um, Lefty. But the grandpa gets up, tries to chuck a hammer at Lefty, misses, hits Leatherface, which is hysterical. He um, falls onto the table. The chainsaw was through the table where the cook's hiding with the grenade. The chainsaw hits the cook, he drops the grenade, and it blows them all up, except Chop Top and the DJ. They've escaped, well, he, she's escaped and Chop Top's chasing her. But she gets a chainsaw at the end and whacks somewhere and he goes falling off a cliff into the rubble. But he could come back. In fact, I don't know if any, so, um, some of the other family members could possibly come back. I mean, Leatherface gets a chainsaw to the stomach, but he's still going. So, they could, they could come back, but as it stands, the next sequel completely ignores this one, or pays little attention to it anyway. I'd give this one a 10 out of 10, or a 9 out of 10. Bye.